Hello, Dr. Kerr. This is Zia Huang. I'm currently working as an occupational therapist in Brooklyn Nursing Home. As a healthcare worker, it is important for me to work with other disciplines like physicians, nurses, physical therapists, and social workers. The first thing I would act differently if I was the owner of my facility is that I would facilitate communication and collaboration between different disciplines. For now, I feel like so many times we have arguments with other departments because of miscommunication. For example, there was one time the social worker contacted the patient's family members and decided the discharge date for the patient in their discussion. However, the social worker did not inform the rehab and nursing departments timely. So when it was time for the patient to go home, rehab did not have enough time to prepare the assistive device for the patient to go home and return to the community safely. And we heard the complaints from the patient and the patient's family members as well. Therefore, if I could be in charge of the facility, I will help the health team to build up more effective communication systems like using emails and daily messaging to reinforce the shared purpose. Also, I think that um, empowering department leaders to define and communica communicate goals company-wide to their staff is important as well. So all staff in this facility could work together and work more effectively to deliver high quality care. The second thing I would like to address is if I was the owner of my facility is that I advocate for work-life balance. As for now, the facility is understaffed, so often the staff here has to work overtime or has a high caseload to take care of every resident in this facility. But we know that it is unhealthy for a person to work to have a work-life imbalance for a long time. As a healthcare worker, my job is to take good care of people, help them restore their functions, and then live independently again. However, it is also important to take care of my own mental health and physical health as well. During, especially during this time, people are still suffering from the COVID situation and inflation. So the pressure of making a living is high. So it is crucial that we take good care of ourselves and find a work-life balance. I will also help the staff manage their work hours more efficiently. For example, educate them on how to plan a, a day schedule so they could divide the time to each task and start work on things earlier. Also, I would try to hire more staff to decrease each one's workload. And the last thing I will address in my facility is that respect different cultures and be more sensitive to different cultures so we can deliver more holistic care to our patients. For example, there was one time I had a Muslim patient. In his religion, he doesn't eat pork he's, and he is vegetarian as well. However, the meals the facility provided to him still had meat. So he was very disappointed with, uh, he was very disappointed at the service which the facility provided. So to prevent this kind of incident from happening again, it is important that the facility educate the staff to be more culturally sensitive. And recently, healthcare organizations in the states are more culturally, culturally diverse. Culturally, competence has become one of the important skills uh, in the workplace. As a result, leaders and managers need to value diversity and provide opportunities for training and education in cultural competency. Developing cultural competence also helps healthcare professionals um, help them to deliver culturally competent care to their patients of all cultures. And by recognizing patients' needs and concerns more effectively, 
low organization can increase patients' satisfaction with healthcare services and achieve better outcomes. And thank you. That's all for my presentation today.